Right then guys, I am back here at the bus shelter, or wind shelter as I like to use it for, um, at Kirkwall Airport. And I'm going to be taking a flight in about 45 minutes time over to pa -Pa Westray uh, via North Ronald, say, in a bit of Norman Islander with Logan Air. It should be really exciting this. Uh, I've never been on one of these <laughs> craft before. I don't think it's very big at all, really. Well, why don't you come with me for the trip? Anyway, we'll find out what it's like. Beautiful day for it. Hopefully take some great shots on the way, and I'll see you on board. Cheers for now. Okay, so Kirkwall Airport, I guess, is the gateway to the islands, because from here you can fly to E-Day, Stronsay, Sanday, Westray, Papa Westray, and also North Ronaldsay. And I've flown up here the day before from Birmingham via Aberdeen, I'll link the video from that second leg, by the way, just up here. As you enter the terminal building, you have the check-in desks for anything other than the inter-island flights on your right here. Uh, to your left is the bar cafe area, and I'll tell you what, they do a great breakfast in the morning if you're ever up here that early. As you walk past the glass cabinets displaying interesting artefacts from the islands, uh, there's the rather unassuming baggage carousel just right in front of you. And then around to your left is the check-in desk for the Inter-Island Air Service. Uh, baggage is weighed and placed on the belt, um, and as you can see here, both passengers and crew exit through this door on the right. Yeah, there's a great view from the ramp from here. Um, not much going on, to be honest, other than uh, another Saab 340. And our aircraft, the Britain Norman Islander, which was just taken off for North Ronaldsay before returning to prepare for our flights uh, due to depart at 1600 hours. I note the baggage cart, by the way. And yeah, everything goes on here. There just isn't any room at all in the cabin itself. Uh, we were soon called to board and yeah it was a short walk over to GBLDV, the 38 year old twin propeller Britain Norman BN2 Islander. Now, I was lucky enough to end up in one of the seats uh, just behind the pilot uh, with a capacity of eight to nine passengers according to the Logan Air website and the front and middle seats will board from the right hand side here and the rear is accessed from the left. I thought it was a bit like getting into an old camper van, really. I thought, was, you know, with the bench seats and all that inside. Everyone found their seatbelts okay? Yes, thank you. It's stuff, um, just all the usual stuff. You've got a little safety card in front of you. The pilot gets in last and makes himself comfortable. Now, I believe the adjacent seat can be occupied by another passenger in certain circumstances, but it was left empty today. Now, we get a quick safety briefing, making sure everyone is strapped in, etc. Now, most of the passengers on this flight I think were locals, so I guess they're used to doing this trip all the time. It's a bit like a taxi service, I would have thought, for them, but an essential one at that. Now then it's time to start the engines, and uh, we make the quick taxi out to the runway. Uh, we'd be departing towards the west today on runway 27. Enjoy the takeoff and the views as we head towards our first stop this afternoon, North Ronaldsay.
yet you probably noticed on the altimeter that we were cruising at about 900 to 1000 feet uh, flying over Chapinsay and Sanday before descending towards North Ronaldsay approaching from the east to, to land on the short gravel runway. Uh, the pilot then taxis back to the terminal building uh, to drop off a couple of passengers and then uh, pick another couple up. The flight time for this leg of the journey is approximately 17 minutes according to Logan Air's inter-island timetable. Uh, North Ronaldsay is the northernmost island in the Orkneys, a population about 72 and most famous for its lighthouse, bird life and an uh, unusual breed of sheep apparently. Oh, by the way, if you appreciate hearing these amazing facts, or just watching my travels in general, you can now leave me a super thanks uh, by clicking on the heart and dollar sign icon below. I'm not popular enough to be sponsored by Sunshark or whatever they're called, so yeah, alongside Kofi, this is a kind of super generous way of liking my videos. Thanks in advance. After sitting on the aircraft for a few minutes, we taxi back to the runway and are soon back in the air heading west this time and directly into the sun. It's a seven minute flight time for this leg as we head over to Papa Westray, or Pape as it's known locally, and again we climb to about a thousand feet for this short hop, um, flying over the body of water between the two islands. I have a quick check of the leg room, claimed to be a seepage of 28 inches and also the safety guard. Though I must admit, this is the one aircraft where I'm not in the slightest bit bothered about stuff like this. It's all about the thrill of the flight, isn't it? And the views, absolutely spectacular. So here we are approaching the airfield of Papa Westray from the north this time. If you're flying in, I guess you just line it up with the main road which runs alongside just here on your left. Uh, Pape has a population of about 90 and I reckon it has to be most famous as the eastern point of the world's shortest scheduled flight. Uh, which is of course why I'm here in the first place. There are also some fantastic beaches, uh, wildlife and a Neolithic farmstead which at 3500 BC is said to be the oldest preserved house in Northern Europe. So in terms of prices, an adult economy day return from Kirkwall to Pape is currently £36. However, if you spend a night on the island, it only costs £21, which is great value, isn't it? Now there's quite a mixture of fares to the different islands, so I would recommend having a look at the Logan Air website for up-to-date pricing. Now I'm staying at the brilliant hostel accommodation here, which also has a small shop and doubles as a pub on Saturday nights. 4.9 on Google reviews, it's about £33 a night. Now I'll post a link in the description below. Hmm, it just happens to be a Saturday today. What fantastic timing. Happy 
and all the archives and things like that. Brilliant time to explore. Thank you very much. See you later. After going through arrivals, which is basically a gate, and a baggage reclaim, <laughs> it was time to make my way to the hostel. And then I decided to take a walk out to the aforementioned Neolithic monument, just to watch the sunset really, and reflect on the day I'd spent travelling. Well guys, travel is amazing, isn't it? And everybody should do it. I know that sounds a bit obvious, but yesterday I was in Shrewsbury, and today I'm on Papo Estuary in the Orkney Islands, which is pretty remote and I got here on uh, the smallest aircraft I've ever flown on but isn't it brilliant because you know I'm just basically standing in a field now but look at that look at the views tonight and I'm coming down here to watch the sun go down a fantastic day some amazing sights some fantastic scenery everybody should try it and Honestly, this has been one of the best travel days I've ever experienced, I think. Anyway, tomorrow I'm um, off to, this is a positioning flight really, because tomorrow I'm off to Westray, which is, um, you know, if I point you back to the sun there, you can pretty much, well, maybe look, you can't see it at the moment, but the, the air field is just over there. And, uh, and we're flying from Papa Westray airfield, which is just there. You can just see the red and white. Um, Kind of the boundary of, of the airfield and it is the world's shortest scheduled flight around about 90 seconds so and that's going to be amazing too i'm sure it is but in the meantime guys thank you so much for watching this i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and until the next time cheers for now